Why does the black man serve the white man? Why does everything the black man do benefit the white man? Why does the black man say freedom is doing what I want to do? And why is it that everything he wants to do enriches the European? Welcome to the desert of the real. Brother Holocism, you there? I'm here. How you feeling? You today, hear bro? me? I hear you. I got you. I say, how you okay. feeling today? I'm good. I'm good. I was just yeah, chilling yeah. with my brother. We were watching hey. Hidden Colors Four. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's that's some beautiful stuff there, man. Yeah, I think um, Tariq Nasheed should be applauded for what he's doing. Yes, yes. I can't wait you know. to go ahead and see Hidden Colors 2006. You know. Yeah, man. It goes before to so go ahead and have a, you know that 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 one that's, that's in the 2000. Uh, so, what do you think about this uh, this, this individual, George Zimmerman 2.0? It's about to happen again. He's gonna get off. So, I mean, what, what are your thoughts, brother? Well, that's my thoughts. He's gonna get off. It's like we don't see. We don't have any respect, and when you don't have any respect, nobody fears you, so nobody cares about the repercussions because they know you ain't really going to do nothing. And see, one of the things about us that that I find interesting, me and my brother was talking about this, and we were talking about the mindset of black men. And he was saying, you, you know, there's not a lot of older black men that have any more fire left in them. It's like they've all been defeated. And instead of them just being defeated and going somewhere and, you know, just getting out of the public eye and just gently going out into the good night, what they do is they get on a campaign to teach us not to fight. To teach us to be bootlicking coons You know When you have a winning team The captain and the person Who's a winner is usually the one That's talking to the team We the only people where we have the, the buffoon The court jester The clowns Giving inspirational and motivational speeches To the masses You know it's it's crazy We got the losers Trying to rally, rally up the troops mm-hmm. Actually they're trying to convince the troops Not to fight Yep yep. I mean they want to make Coonery look cool You know like they're smoking cigars And wearing shades And, and, and trying to be cool being a coon Yep And those are the people That we let have the microphone Those are the people that we let have The ear of the people and as you can see, I mean, when you try to talk to people about nationalism and try to talk about solving our problems systematically, you see what resistance you get. Yes. Because they're going according to their training. You got some Negro telling them black folks ain't never going to do this. You can't trust black folks. You can't trust no niggas. Da, 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 da. Just these are the people that we have on our team. People that don't believe the team can win. And the people who think the team can win are treated like extremists. Mm-hmm. Radicals. Yeah. Because we actually want to win the game. Everything It's like everything has been turned upside down. The coward is now considered the hero, and the hero is now considered the coward. Oh, man, that, that's awesome. It's fact, you know. It's it's one of those things. It's like, you know, how can how can these people really speak for everyone? And and it and it 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 baffles me when I go ahead and I see that um, the them them cowards are the spokesmen all the time. Every mm-hmm. time every time something like this hits the media, it's like, well, we're gonna go ahead and talk to Al Shockton. You know, like he speaks for me. No, I I got a lot of criticism from Al Shockton. 
so why aren't you going ahead and get an individual that's similar to you know, just someone the opposite? They, they don't want to put them out there because that would rally the troops and get the masses in a, in a better mindset to be like, you know what, fuck this, fuck you, and go ahead and tell the goddamn truth. And um, these people just seem like they just can't wait to go ahead and force their opinion and go ahead and convince you to surrender like they have. It's better on this side. You're going to be all right. Go mm-hmm. ahead. Don't worry about that ass whooping. Hey, you know, they shot that young man and killed him. That's all right. Yeah, everything's yeah, all right. We we, we so everything. used to dying. You know, they used yeah. to seeing all. And you know what's funny? This is the reason why, like, if you notice and, and if you know my history, I'm very defensive of of my people, especially the people at the lower economic rung. Oh, me too. You know, me too. I'm very defensive of them. I don't like when people pick on them, and I'm the first person to jump up and defend them when I see somebody trying to dismiss them and go against them. Right. And I don't blame the people for where they are right now. I really don't. What I blame is the intelligentsia. I blame the so-called leadership because... Where are all these people, all these culture critics? Is there a meeting that they meet at where they all get together to formulate strategies and tactics on how we're going to get out of this situation? I don't know. I would say, yeah, honestly. But you just don't know about it. You ain't invited to it because you, you are a radical. You know, no, I'm a, it's you a want to secret go meeting. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm telling you. I wish that was true. <laughs> I really wish it was true. I wish that they were doing it in secret. I don't have to be there. I just would like to know that somebody besides people that's working jobs, trying to do this shit in their spare time, Mm -hmm. somebody besides us is actually thinking about our people. Mm -hmm. Because it seems to me that the people who care the most are the people who are sitting back trying to formulate strategies and figure out how to do shit is the people who you know, trying to provide food, clothing, and shelter for themselves and their families. But yet you got people whose job is dedicated to that. That's their job. That's how they get paid. And they don't give a damn. Jesse Lee Peterson. They don't give a damn. We got them money. Yeah, man. And and, and it seems to, that mindset seems to grow with, with, you can go ahead and say that, hey, uh, this person's been to college and, and whatever, but they really don't. You, you lack something where you don't have no real education, okay? You can go ahead and, and regurgitate the shit that they taught you, but you can't tell nobody nothing about yourself and how you got here. Mm-hmm. You know everything about these people. And you can yeah. go ahead and, and uh, those individuals want to go ahead and, and those are the types of individuals who are going to tell you that our history pretty much started with slavery. Mm. That we ain't never had nothing. We ain't never been nowhere. We ain't never done nothing. Well, see, people like Jesse Lee Peterson, to me, he's not, because black folks ain't listening to Jesse Lee Peterson. These, there's not a black audience that's listening to any of these Republican, right wing, conservative leaning clowns. You Their audience yes, is made up is. of 95% white people. But they, they are. They they do have something. You know what I saw? Uh, I had never saw this. I hadn't saw this like, during this election cycle. I hadn't saw some of the people that was going ahead and supporting Ben Carson. Do you know he had a he had quite a few blacks in in in, in high positions or you know spokesmen this that running that. Yeah, you know, he had a lot of black folks in, on his side. Mhm. Yeah. And, and, but it's not really a lot compared to who his audience is. His audience is primarily white. Yes, it's like there's still. not many black people that you know of. Like the average black person, forget people like in our circle because we know who he is because we keep aware of what's going on in the world. But the masses of our people who's not even thinking about the shit that we're talking about, they don't know who the fuck Ben Carson is. They don't. They not. You know what I'm saying? He has no audience. They're not listening to him. The people that they're listening to is some probably some actor or some entertainer or singer or rapper. Those are the people that got the people's ears, for the most part. 
you know, we're trying to get their ear and just give them something as an alternative so they can get some type of knowledge in their head. And that's why I support the Hidden Colors films and stuff like that. But I did want to offer a, a, a critique, nothing to break it down, but just a critique that I have. Go ahead, bro. It seems like when we get to the solutions part of the video, the solutions part of the tape, that's when everything face plants. <laughs> because you're giving me three quarters of how the white man is systematically controlling our reality. And then right. you turn around at the end when it comes to the solutions, and then it's like, well, the first thing you got to do is you got to eat better. You got to grow some food, grow your own food. You got It turns into a whole self-help thing. Yeah. And that's the thing that really annoys me because it's like, listen, if you're facing a systematic problem, don't you have to respond systematically? Mm-hmm. You give Because it's frustrating. I'm thinking what it must be for the average person who don't know anything, an average black person who don't really know about their history or their culture, and they watch this video and they see, oh, wow, look at all the things that the white man has done, and blah, 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 blah. And then when they get to the solution session, it's basically like, all right, nigga, you, now you got all this information, go out there and, and be black. It's like no plan except, well, it's on you, Jalil. Peace. Mm -hmm. That's very frustrating for the masses. You can't do that. You got to give them a vision. You got to give them a a goal, a vision for the future. You know what I'm saying? Everybody is not going to grow their own food. Sorry. Not going to happen. Right. right. There's people that don't even cook for themselves. You, you expect them to go out there planting shit? Yeah, that that's where I step in. I make money. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> you do it. You know what I'm saying? I'll do it. But the average person is not. We, see, we keep talking to the, it's like we preaching to the choir instead of realizing who the audience is that we're trying to reach. We're trying to reach people that are primarily consumers. So you, are you going to yeah. tell me that every single black person, every 44 million in this country is going to plant their own vegetables? No. They're going to have their own business? Right. They're going to go to the library and learn about the, the history of their people? It's not going to happen that way. Right. The solution, as we've already stated, is nationhood. Yep. Nationhood gives the outlet, it's the vehicle for all of these talents and all of these skills to be directed. If you're not, what's the purpose of going out and getting a skill if it's not directed toward anything? Amos Wilson always used to talk about this all the time. You're getting an education for what? Because other people are getting education so they can maintain their system. You're, what are you getting right. an education for? So you can be a solo soldier for nobody? It works for no army. It's true. We got to think systematically. We got to think. We have to have the people that know what time it is getting together, communicating with each other, and, and trying to map out strategies and tactics instead of having egos and trying to see who's going to be the king of consciousness. Mm-hmm. And that's what our I problem agree. is. Our problem is not the people. The people will go where the leadership goes. The problem is the leadership ain't doing nothing. Everybody got their fucking hands in their pockets doing absolutely nothing. But they're breaking down the system. They can break down for about two, three hours what's wrong with the system. Can go back in ancient history and tell you who did this and who did what and how the white man, blah, 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 blah. But what are we doing to prepare for the future as a people collectively? If you want to grow food, grow food. I have nothing against that. Mm-hmm. Nothing against that. Yes, we should become more self-sufficient. I mean, I'm not against that. I'm not anti that. But I'm saying that, that you don't give a self-help course to people after you tell them what the systematic problem is. 
You got to provide a systematic solution, and the systematic solution is nationhood. Yeah, you know, it's a no-brainer. And, and I, I, I keep saying, I, I'm, I keep saying, go ahead and get into growing your own food, but go ahead and look beyond just going your growing your own food. You got to go ahead and look at here, grow this food, whether you're growing, and what's the purpose of it? Sustain, sustain yourself, and to go ahead and keep yourself out of this, out of this health, out of this healthcare system. Okay. Yeah, but the see the time, thing with that, chef. The let problem me, let with that. This. Let me let me say this. So so you, so what? it fits. So at the at the end of going ahead, you going ahead and making this this, this you, you you growing your stuff. Uh, you, there's a way you can make a profit off this. Okay, that that's you can go ahead and sustain yourself and go ahead and uh, you you keep your health up, but also go ahead and 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 be a substance farmer and go ahead and sell your stuff to other people. And that's the message I don't hear when I hear people go ahead and talk about eat healthy and, and grow your own food. Go ahead, go look beyond that. Go ahead, and look beyond just go ahead and just grow on your own food. That don't, it don't make sense to go ahead and get there and stop because I've seen people. I I I, I know of a a a, a group of black a, a black farm here. It's like they're growing stuff and constantly people are coming and telling me say they. They got stuff that's going here rotting and stuff on the ground, you know. So why aren't you bringing people down there to go ahead and get that stuff up, tomatoes, whatever, and go ahead and package it and process it and go ahead and set up a stand somewhere and keep it and fund what you're doing. See what I'm saying? Yeah. But, see, the the people who are going to do that is a very limited amount of people out of the hall. Nobody, it's like I had made a video about this one time, and I said that if we expect – do we expect that everybody is going, let's say everybody goes, we got 44 million black folks, all of them go to the library and learn about their history and their culture. All of them plant their own foods and vegetables. All of them put money into a black bank. All of them. Then what? Then what? Yeah, yeah, then what? It's what, like, what, what's to go beyond that? Does okay. everybody have to be aware in order for us to start some shit? Like Earl said in the show, when they started um, Israel, it was about less than 300 people. Yeah. So why do you need yeah. the whole entire race to have knowledge of self before we do something? To me, that's a stalling tactic. It's a stalling tactic because you know that that does that is not what it requires for us to start something. What requires is the people who claim they know what time it is have to come together. This is the reason why I don't have. If you notice, there's not really anybody that I really unless you are bootlicking coon. Like if you if you are Jesse Lee Peterson or you are you know these dudes on Facebook and, and YouTube. Who's Billy? You know, who's just obviously against black people. I really don't have that big of an issue with you. I can even disagree with you on tactics and strategies or whatever. But I don't. You're not my enemy. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like I may not agree with Killer Mike on everything that he says, but he's not my enemy. Right. Right. I may not agree with Umar Johnson on everything that he says, but he's not my enemy. I may not agree with Tariq Nasheed on everything he says, but he ain't my enemy. Why are we separated? Shouldn't all of us brothers? Shouldn't all of us brothers be in communication with one another? Right. Shouldn't right. we be doing conferences and meetings and whatever? What the hell is our problem? And then we're going to go around telling people what they should and shouldn't do? 